today's speaker is Alexandra Naimak. He's a native of Tashkent, Uzbekistan, and was trained as an archaeologist and historian at Tashkent and then Moscow University. Uh, for nearly a decade, he worked at the Moscow Museum of Oriental Art, directing excavation projects in Central Asia and participating in archaeological projects on the North Caucasus. He then went to Indiana University, Bloomington, where he received a double PhD in Central Eurasian Studies and Art History. He has studied at the American Numismatic Society. As a Horseman Fellow, he was uh, at the Eurasian Abteilung at the German Archaeological Institute in Berlin. And for the last 25 years, he has been teaching at Hofstra University as a professor of art history and as the director of Middle Eastern and the Central Asian program. He has also taught at Columbia in New York and Humboldt University in Berlin, and has three times held the Sharma Fellowship in Middle Eastern Numismatics and Epigraphy at Oxford University. He publishes on various aspects of Central Asian art and archeology. span uh, His main research interest is Sogdian Numismatics, and he uh, was the winner of this past year's Ashoka Prize, which the Oriental Numismatic Society gives every year for the best paper in the journal of the Oriental Numismatic Society. And he received this for his uh, paper on the immobilized types in Sogdian coinage, uh, uh, talking about Antiochus imitations and Hyrcodis. And today he will be talking about another aspect of Sogdian numismatics, you see the title there on your screen. So take it away, Sasha. All right, now to the presentation. First of all, that's where Sogdian is. We're talking about this little area. Uh, that is Sogdian in its surroundings, um, Church, Fergana, Willi, Taharistan, Bakhtia. Uh, well, further here, Margiana. Uh, so, uh, and Sogdian is actually just four oases, formally. However, this area, which is adjacent to the large mass of mountains, well, usually called Nurata or Turkestan, so the number of uh, uh, rivers and rivulets coming down from these mountains, and on these mountains there were a number of important principalities. Uh, we'll include them. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Buhara and Naksha, we'll see, uh, but uh, mostly concentrate on Samarkand and these areas. Uh, a few words about uh, uh, preceding work. Of course, everybody knows uh, in Sogdian numismatics that um, the founder of the field, uh, although there were precedents of very important publications uh, earlier, including uh, Drouin, including Ado de la Fille, uh, and uh, a number of publications in English, um, uh, including Cunningham, uh, uh, some in German, uh, some in Russian. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the real founder of Soviet numismatics is Olga Ivan Smirnova. Uh, fewer people know that she was, first of all, philologist. She was trained as philologist, and she was, throughout her career, uh, was mostly mainly uh, working um, uh, in the Institute of Orientalistics on uh, the edition of texts. She was uh, one who was responsible for uh, Volume 3 in Shahnameh, uh, multi multi-volume edition of Shahnameh, Moscow edition. She was also responsible for parts of Jamiat Tavarikh uh, by Rashiduddin. Um, and uh, she was working on uh, Tarikhi Bukhara, never finished it, but published uh, three important articles. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, she is best known for her works on Sogdian uh, history. Uh, these are four books. She has a large number of articles as well. Uh, and um, among them is edition of economic documents from the MOOC uh, archive, which was published together with um, um, Bagalubov, and um, a book on the history, um, sketches of Sogdian history, you can call it, um, um, mostly about social history of Sogdiana, um, um, published in 1971. But mainly, and that is uh, uh, what she's best known for, are two catalogs of Sogdian coins. First, a uh, catalog of Panjakan finds, including 1950s, well, from 1946 to 1956. And then uh, she published uh, something that she called um, Catalogue Raisonne uh, of um, Sogdian bronze coins. 
Uh, well, uh, um, we should be uh, very clear about it. Uh, she was uh, working with the materials that were available at that time. And uh, also uh, she limited herself uh, on a number of fronts. Uh, for one, she uh, didn't work with silver in this catalog and uh, in, in general did very little work with silver Sogdian coinage. And that cuts off all early Sogdian coinages up to the sixth century, well, with the exception of uh, minor things in Bukhara. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, she uh, didn't do Bukhara. And uh, well, uh, pre Islamic Bukhara uh, from the beginning of coinage in the third century BC uh, and uh, to uh, the Arab conquest gives us over 50 different types of coins. And uh, only uh, um, three, four types of uh, belonging to th uh, uh, two series were uh, actually included in the catalog of um, uh, Smirnova. Likewise, she didn't touch really upon uh, the coinage of Southern Sword. Uh, Kesh and Nasha principalities, where we have actually 28 types as of now, uh, uh, known types as of now, uh, and uh, only uh, uh, really uh, two were included uh, by Smirnova into her catalog, both with uh, uh, wrong attributions. One was uh, attributed to Fergana, uh, second one was uh, left unknown. Uh, in other words, uh, she mostly dealt with the mm -hmm. bulk of material which was coming out of Penjikan, first of all, uh, partially Samarkand, in the areas, uh, collections of the museums, uh, associated with Samarkand sword. Uh, well, she did also uh, include uh, quite a number of church coins and coins of Simirechia. She was uh, uh, starting Simirechia numismatics in many respects, and uh, likewise, she was important for church studies. But uh, these were random series. Uh, uh, as we now know, uh, the uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of types, which uh, she simply was not aware of. Well, uh, that's uh, not her fault, of course. Uh, she was uh, a major scholar, and we should uh, uh, be very grateful to her for uh, what she did. But it's clear that 50 years later, and in fact, the catalog was actually uh, finished by mid-70s, so it's 50 years past. 50 years later, uh, there's much new material that helped uh, to uh, build a picture. Secondly, uh, there was another major scholar who did the work on early Sogdiana, that was Eugen Zemel. He never published a book on this. He planned uh, uh, to publish a book on ancient Sogdian coinages, but she um, uh, never was able uh, to do this. Uh, uh, um, and um, she published uh, a large number of important articles uh, concerning the subject and included some subjects into his book on the coinage of uh, uh, Tajikistan, on the ancient coinage of, uh, from the territory of Tajikistan. Uh, uh, well, we owe him the first systematic picture of Sogdian coinages in antiquity, silver coinages. And uh, that is the plate on the right is actually uh, the plate which uh, demonstrates this. Once more, uh, much has happened, especially during the last two decades. Zemo died in 1997. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, uh, there was uh, this enormous outburst of um, uh, um, metal detecting activity with huge numbers of coins appearing on the market, uh, in the collections, in the museums. And uh, ultimately, um, the system created by Zemo uh, is now being overflown by new material. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, something uh, that uh, would uh, give us an idea of how it is, uh, that is uh, just uh, 200, uh, 300, no, sorry, uh, actually 480 years of ancient Sogdian coinage in, the, in a systematic view. And uh, in fact, between uh, 50 and 100 on the Domini, in Sogdiana, there were, uh, uh, and at that, that time, Sogdiana was independent, Kushan borders were, as indicated on this map. Sogdiana uh, had nine separate coinages running simultaneously in the country. Uh, this uh, map was done two years ago, and uh, it's a little bit out of date. There's one more coinage that should be inserted. Uh, so, uh, things are happening. 
Uh, and of course, we got a very different idea of what ancient Sogdiana looks like. Uh, just to say that Zemoch was uh, basing his opinion on the lack of the finds, of the lack of the material, uh, thought that Sogdiana in the first century was really barbaric periphery. And in fact, if you look at these coins, they don't look like barbaric periphery. Uh, we can talk about different models, uh, um, which are applicable in this case. But, uh, well, uh, I have to tell you, our Ashtat on the right is um, no less sophisticated gentleman than Hiraias on the left. And uh, in fact, uh, I'm assuming that um, uh, in the first century in Domini, uh, Sogdiana was uh, developing en par with, uh, uh, um, with uh, uh, Bactria, with Taharistan, northern Taharistan at least, uh, uh, well, uh, the events of the second century pushed it back with uh, Tukharistan moving forward with Kushan Empire and Sogdiana falling behind after numeric invasions, but that's a longer story. Uh, uh, also, even where Zemo uh, did the most important work uh, in the uh, um, Samarkand coinage uh, of the third to the six centuries, um, there's so much new material that um, where we where we where we had four series of coins, we now have fourteen. This plate is already out of date. Also, um, it's actually fourteen now, not twelve. Uh, and uh, uh, we suddenly found out that uh, where um, everybody saw only uh, imitational coinage, we have actually a uh, a high quality, relatively high quality coinage uh, with um, um, three denominations, uh, drachm, hemidrachm, and abolos. And uh, that lasts for a while. And when the lowest denomination becomes uh, too small, it is replaced by copper. In other words, uh, Sogdians in the third to the sixth century, at least in terms of coinage, were not all that backward at all. The question is why they didn't want uh, to uh, change co uh, uh, co uh, uh, the types of their coins, why they stick to immobilized types, types that is a different matter. Uh, so, uh, in other words, uh, much happened during the last years, and very much due to uh, a huge volume of material that appears out of soil with excavations and, first of all, with metal detecting. Um, well, um, returning back to the map of Sogdiana, uh, well, first of all, this is Samarkand, and um, this is a map which we will be using today a lot uh, that shows Samarkand and then um, principalities which were attributed, uh, uh, coinage, which, is, which were attributed by Smirnova, that's Panch, Penjikend. Uh, and then Ustrushana, Bunjika. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we are going to talk about four other coinages which were identified uh, within, well, actually, the last year. Uh, that is Zamin, uh, that is Fiknan, Dizak and Harkana, that is uh, Barkath or Barkat, and then Kabudan. Uh, and then we'll talk about about uh, a little bit about the things in the West. Samarkand. Well, uh, Smirnova uh, actually um, um, laid out the foundation there. She uh, published all relevant types. Uh, typology, which I offer, is different now, but that's not the matter of the subject. Uh, just demonstrating the variety of coinage. Uh, these are Sogdianic sheds um, from um, actually um, somebody who was called. Gumuja or Kumuja or Kumuji. Uh, my Chinese is below uh, zero, so I have to apologize. Um, and uh, then Shishpir, uh, um, well, probably Tanuka, um, used to be Wazurg, uh, uh, or uh, so probably Vanuka, it used to be Wazurg or Tanuka. Uh, Varhoman, uh, Urkvar Tarmauk, or uh, um, Chamuk, um, the 
last part is correction of Yeshi there. Uh, then um, uh, we see um, um, uh, Tukas Padak, and then somebody who is um, um, read as Mastic, Avian, Navian, um, and uh, then finally Tarhun. Uh, this change in the order of Gurex coins, I had an article on this. Uh, uh, what is important here, what is important to mention that most likely this, what was struck in, or well, not struck, what was struck in Samarkand, struck in cast in Samarkand, and that what was uh, issued, cast in Ishtihan. Uh, and then um, Lerno also uh, did uh, very solid work on the coinage of punch, although, of course, eventually, uh, um, even there, uh, excavations conducted by Bolshakov uh, and then later by Raskopova, Marshak, and other members of the expedition uh, with um, uh, very precise archaeological stratigraphy um, clarified a lot of stuff. Well, uh, uh, nowadays we have four coinages and uh, four, sorry, four, four types and uh, in this coinage and um, the two last types uh, um, with the name of Nana uh, should be attributed to Divashtich. I think Nana was actually the title of Divashtich uh, because, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Ibn Hurdasbih and uh, Albiruni uh, uh, list title uh, um, um, like this uh, for the rulers of Bhutan. So we don't need to uh, invent the goddess there or uh, theophoric name of the wife of Divashtich. It's actually the title uh, of uh, probably the rulers of Bhutan, with the center in Machia, where Pasha Lugia is now excavating. Uh, well, I also would like to mention that the fakes uh, appearing. Uh, this is um, a coin of, uh, so-called the coin of Bichut, which was uh, published uh, uh, in, as a, as a, as a um, a genuine coin, uh, and um, I raised um, objections uh, to it. In fact, uh, um, I was uh, criticized by uh, other members of the Zealand community, uh, some members of the Zealand community, uh, not by administrators, uh, uh, who uh, suggested, uh, well, that um, I'm wrong. Well, um, as of now, there are four coins from one matrix. No, this is surely fake. Um, so um, that is that can be closed. Uh, and then the coinage of Ustrushana. Well, beautiful Ustrushana is always fantastic. I'm talking about uh, Ustrushana with the center in Bunjikat, and I would place Bunjikat firmly into Ura um, uh, um To me, there's no question. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the coinage of Ustrushana. Uh, the order, the, the original uh, maybe type, uh, possibly looked like this. Uh, and then we have a number of uh, 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 types uh, with different names of rulers, some of which actually repeat. So uh, we have pairs, so that uh, both Rahanj is uh, uh, twice appearing, Chermish is twice appearing, and uh, Sachak, or as Pashalari wants, or Satachari uh, is also, as uh, Smirnov wanted, is also twice appearing. Um, so uh, these are different types once more. Um, and um, well, now do something new. Um, Zamin. Uh, what do we know about Zamin is that uh, Zamin is actually um, from geographers, Arab geographers, that Zamin is actually the second largest city within Greater Ostrushana at that time. Uh, well, almost the same size as Bunjikat. Uh, and uh, uh, the Zamin uh, uh, was, um, had, had a lot of economic power because there was uh, various kinds of uh, metal production associated with it and so on. Uh, we didn't know about uh, um, um, numismatic prehistory of uh, Zamin, nothing about pre-Islamic period, uh, but that changed and uh, we now can attribute this coin series, uh, which has been known for a long time in Sogdian. In fact, it was still published first by Smirnova, but she didn't quite know what to do with it. 
uh, because uh, these were few coins in Penjikind, uh, and um, um, uh, she uh, kept them in three different areas. Uh, so one, she earliest coin with Farnbach, she attributed to Fergana. Then this was uh, considered to be an um, unknown center. Well, she, in different times, tried to attribute it to uh, Chachus, Roshana, Bukhara, uh, but then finally came with the idea that they should be left alone. Uh, and then uh, these are coinages which she attributed to, uh, well, Haluch. Uh, well, that's what she read in the inscription. And um, she thought that this is um, uh, the tribal Turkic name. Um, well, number of such uh, things, uh, such tribal attributions she made, none of them actually sustainable. Uh, and... Uh, mm, uh, so she divided it into different sections in her uh, catalog. Um, but um, recently we got uh, quite a few new finds. Uh, this is um, the state of um, the business nowadays. Uh, uh, these are three photographs of the coins of one hoard, seven coins from the area of Zamin. Uh, and uh, uh, we don't have a single obverse, uh, a single reverse, sorry, only obverse photographs, because uh, that's what's preserved in the phone of the finder. Uh, and um, um, in some way, we are, we have no choice than to work with this material, because otherwise we are in darkness. Uh, so this hoard is from Zamin area. This one, uh, much larger, uh, was found uh, um, in Pshadarsai by another collector uh, and uh, is um, uh, gone also, uh, um, but uh, once more, photographs only of obverses were available in this beautiful carpet. I cleaned them, uh, so, uh, but um, uh, this is, uh, of course, not high quality, enough to attribute every each and every coin. And uh, then uh, this is a third hoard of these coins, from the area of Usmat. Uh, well, in order to uh, show where all these areas are, Zamin is here. Shagar Soy is this. And Usmat is here. So they actually show a very large territory. Demonstrate, well, kind of cover a very large territory from here to here. In fact, large number of separate finds uh, were registered within this area. Once more, mostly uh, uh, private collectors. And uh, there's no doubt that this is Zymian coinage. About the origin, about the dates of these coins, uh, Edward Tavilladze, um together with um, two other scholars, published one of these coins uh, from the excavations of Afrasiab. Um, well, in 1960s, it published in 1970s already, and suggested that um, the coin, uh, because of these two crosses, is actually reproducing the type of um, Justinia, well, a follis of Justinian, because on the follis of Justinian, there are two crosses. In fact, uh, uh, now we have much more material and we can trace the process in detail. And in fact, that is what's actually happened. It was imitating golden, uh, gold solidus of uh, uh, Justinian, um, a later version. You can clearly see how it happened. That is Justinianic solidus. That is the earliest copper local Central Asian copper. And uh, then the, the portrait starts actually changing. And on the other side appears the tanga. Some elements, like for example, this wonderful hand here, uh, this one retain, remain on the spear, on the sport. Uh, portrait kept changing for quite a while. Uh, inscription didn't. Two first words in the inscription can be read as Farnbagi, that was 
no question. Smirnova thought that that's the name of a god. Um, she, in general, liked the idea that um, uh, there were temple coins mentioning gods. Um, well, uh, Lipschitz, um, in a private conversation a long time ago, uh, told me that he believes that this is uh, simply titled. And uh, in fact, I absolutely support this idea I, on the basis of multiple um, uh, cases I can, uh, um, which I can cite. Uh, we have uh, Buggy and Unbuggy, uh, in fact, uh, as a title. Uh, well, that may go quite far back because um, um, uh, this year uh, in the Festship for Joe Crib, uh, I published uh, uh, an article on Queens of Sega Harris, and uh, there I uh, actually uh, cited uh, the um, uh, reading by uh, Nicholas Sims Williams. Well, it's not a reading, it's actually an interpretation of um, uh, an inscription, well known inscription of Sega Harris, as uh, uh, blessed or, well, um, uh, charismatic. Um, a ruler of Sega ruler and Harris is simply Greek uh, for um, well grace um, correctly in English right uh, and uh, that is uh, uh, already the same story with um, uh, Van Baggy uh, except that it is um, um, in the, a different dialect uh, and uh, with Greek um, epithet uh, so uh, the story of this coinage is long um, and uh, once it is uh, started sometime at the end of the sixth century, uh, it actually went as far as the eight. Uh, by all standards, these coins are eighth century. Um, and um, at certain point, um, apparently the uh, power in this um, realm passed to new rulers who retained uh, please note this, retain the Tamha. Once more, this is a case when Tamha is not working as a um, uh, clan badge, but rather as a symbol of realm. Uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, the inscription on these coins, actually the three types of coins, uh, which are end of this very late 8th century series, this is also 8th century, this terminal coins. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, um, Inscription actually says Tardu Kagan. Well, here it was uh, what Smirnov read as Haluch, uh, because this is very unusual polyography. And I had doubts up to actually October, but then a new coin appeared, this one, where it's very clearly uh, says Tardu Kagan. Well, this Tardu Kagan is not Tardu Kagan of the first Turkey Kaganate, uh, no doubt. Uh, this is some actor. Uh, which uh, was um, acting in the eighth um, century. Uh, who is he? I don't know. Um, likewise, uh, the Tardukagan coins of Church also by paleography should be dated to the eighth century. Uh, then there are coins like this. They're unfortunately non-epigraphic, and then there are coins which have inscription, but unfortunately, uh, left one is just a publication of a uh, coin from uh, of, from a hoard found in Bincat in charge, uh, published by Edward Tertilazzi. It's not exactly um, uh, uh, best uh, um, drawing. Uh, you cannot read from it. And then two other coins. Uh, well, this just appeared recently. Uh, this was uh, placed on the scene some time ago. Uh, um, I can't offer um, any sensible reading except for the word hwab, which is kind of an easy thing, uh, in the middle of uh, here in the central line. Um, but uh, the rest of it is still in works. Uh, so, um, nevertheless, uh, because of topography, there's no question that uh, this area uh, um, from Usmat in the south to Zamin and Pishagarsa in the north, uh, this large triangle, uh, was actually a um, zone of circulation of Zamin coins. And um, um, uh, the last word in the inscription on standard type uh, may be Zam, although I cannot uh, uh, completely uh, explain why it is not Zamin, but uh, just Zam. Uh, there's a legend in uh, 
Zamin, an ethnographical recorded, that there was a deity called Zam. But, uh, uh, well, uh, I can't locate exactly the source of this legend. It's being cited in literature, but uh, it's not really um, um, traceable so far to a particular source. Um, so that is the story uh, with Zamin. Then there's a coinage of Fiknan, and it is uh, connected to another uh, hoard find. And uh, this hoard was found uh, near modern Galaral, which uh, is the area where ancient and medieval town of Harkana was situated. There are two Harkanas. One is Harkana um, um, in the area of Karmina, and another one is here. And uh, um, the hoard uh, looked like this. In this case, uh, the finder provided two signs of coins, but out of 22 coins, he photographed only uh, 14. Well, I'll get you 23 coins. One was a Stroshana coin, the other all belonged to one type. Um, so, uh, and that immediately raised a lot of questions because this coinage was also well known um, for, uh, now from publications of Smirnova. She first started publishing it in 1949. Well, the earliest publication of this coins goes back to both Farnberg and uh, this goes go back to Tiesenhausen. Um, in uh, then 1895. But um, these are uh, actually uh, uh, in mass published by Smir more or less in mass published by Smirnova. Uh, and uh, then there were a number of scholars who worked on them, latest articles by Babayarov. Uh, but what is important, uh, the coin was found near Kishlag Bahmao, well, actually by the Tamerlan gates. That's why I bothered to give this picture of Tamerlan Gate that is from 19th century painting by Vera uh, And um, that is here. Exactly the spot is known. It's uh, within this uh, red square. Uh, and as I said, Smirnov already published the coins, but uh, uh, um, they had a very long history changing the style. Uh, and uh, uh, now, with new specimens, it became possible to read the entire legend. Well, Lifshitz at a certain point read this is Mrai, and I have no doubts that that's correct. Here it is Mrai. Uh, so, and uh, then Smirnova also read this is A Un with the uh, um, terminal. Um, well, which with age determining um, uh, feminine. Uh, so uh, the question was in this word. There were a number of interpretations, the latest by Babayarov, who wanted it to be uh, the coinage of um, 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 principality, which uh, united which united Maimurg and Benjikant and Devaraksar and which uh, actually existed in the seventh century. Uh, well, it doesn't work because this coins, uh, the numbers are minuscule in Benjikin, uh, less than 1% of Benjikin finds. Um, and uh, early ones are not represented in Benjikin at all, just at the time when this principality was supposed to exist. So, but uh, uh, in fact, it's possible to read it. And uh, what it says, it says, in fact, pick none. Uh, well, uh, not a very common and well-known name uh, uh, in um, uh, Central Asian geography, uh, but the coinage is massive, and it became clear that this is nothing else but the um, uh, principality which preceded Rustak, Fiknan, uh, Rustak, which actually had a center in Dizak. Well, Dizak being the second uh, um, large city, Harkana was here, in this oasis, Dizak here in the, uh, uh, in the oasis um, where the uh, river hits the plain, uh, the Sangzar River Valley. Uh, so uh, then there was a principality in this um, uh, valley, and uh, that's its coinage. Uh, since the moment when uh, the hoard was found. Uh, well, I uh, uh, um, uh, did some investigations and 
a lot of work was done by my collaborator on this project, um, uh, Anwarat Hadjaev, who actually with whom we published article on this coinage. Um, uh, well, actually, actually, the second one is coming out. And uh, um, uh, uh, overall, uh, it, according to testimony of local collectors, over 100 of these coins came out from the area between Galarau and Dizak, in other words, Harkana and Dizak. Uh, and um, uh, there's no question about the, um, um, about the fact that these coins were circulating in this area. The story is also long. Uh, the uh, coinage uh, changes immensely uh, in my classification nowadays, uh, well, in our classification nowadays, there are nine types. Uh, and uh, uh, that starts uh, apparently somewhere in the early 7th century uh, because uh, it is very similar to this church coins. The similarity is um, really striking. Well, it's really the same gentleman and lady, lady uh, with um, uh, three um, pointed kulach there. Kalpak there, um, um, pointed hat with three tops, and a gentleman uh, with diadem, and uh, here uh, the jewels, and here it is, uh, star and uh, moon. But in principle, they're remarkably similar. Uh, uh, and uh, this dates uh, the beginning of the coinage to the um, uh, early seventh century. Um, at latest, and then this uh, actually uh, hoard had a coin of Ustrasharavchin Satachari in it, and uh, Satachari coins are known from the hoard in uh, um, uh, um, the Vastich time hoard in Penjikend, uh, found uh, in um, um, the stratum of fire, uh, which preceded nine, uh, eight, uh, 722. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, dates uh, quite firm date of the early 8th century, uh, the number of other instances, uh, the date of early 8th century, and uh, then the coins themselves uh, of this uh, type, which are found in Penjikan, are also dated uh, mostly to the 8th century. They belong to the later uh, types, uh, types 5 to uh, um, 9. Uh, well, uh, that's not all. Uh, there was another um, principality right to the south of this two, already on the Samarkand side of the mountains, uh, which was called Buzmajan, Buzmajin, uh, and uh, which actually had a capital town of Barkath. This was already stated by Bartold. And then Hassan Ahun Babayev actually identified uh, um, very um, credibly, uh, the uh, uh, Barkath, uh, the site, the, 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 city, the town of Barkath, with a Aktepe uh, Bulung, of Bulungur, uh, uh, a uh, fairly large um, 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 town site in the middle of the city of Bulungur. Uh, and um, um, then the finds of local um, um, metal detectorists. Uh, included literally hundreds of one type of coins and a hoard of those found over the key to go, so no photographs preserved, uh, only separate coins. Uh, but uh, uh, all this uh, of one type coming from this site, mostly uh, the site gives only one type, and this is actually... Controversial and uh, unlocalized coinage of Ramchitak. Uh, there are two types on this coinage. One is saying Ramchitak Hwab. Uh, there is, uh, as uh, Parsha Luria uh, prompted me, uh, a um, uh, deity which was identified recently by Yoshida Yutaka uh, with this name, but this is certainly not a um, um, divine invocation, divine name invocation. Uh, this is uh, 
the probably Theophoric name of a ruler, uh, because, uh, well, it says Bagi and Bagi in this case title. And here also because on the second coin, it says actually um, Pani, Pani, uh, Bagi, Matak or Zatak. Uh, uh, so uh, Smirno read that something like Parar Bagi Zaur, uh, Zaur, uh, uh, well, um, uh, which actually um, is one of those religious phrases, but um, uh, it's uh, it looks like much simpler standard Soviet set of words uh, for coins. Not all. Um, to the west of Bulungur, to the west of Barkat, is situated a site, it's quite close, a site called um, Minktepe. Beautiful site. I couldn't refrain myself from showing you that aero photo. Um, uh, beautiful in many respects. Um, and um, um, a lot of finds there, uh, including a hoard. And these finds are all actually so-called sanitam coins. That is the hoard, how it was presented. I have once more a little obverse. That is how it was presented on the market by the finder uh, back in late 2000s. Well, meaning that uh, 2009 or something like this. Uh, I do have a record. I don't remember exactly. And these are the coins. Uh, um, Reading of the legend is a problem. Um, we agreed with Pasha Luria uh, simultaneously coming to this idea that, well, there's, there are readings by um, Smirnova, there's a reading by Fyodorov, uh, one more great reading by Fyodorov, uh, something like Nanai Biat, uh, um, not, very, not very exciting. Uh, so uh, we actually uh, agreed with Pasha Luria that this is Naf, Nab, Community. Then Pasha. Then there is something that is that looks like a butt uh, with two B's in the middle. Have nothing to do with Christianity, uh, of course. Uh, in uh, later abbots, but um, uh, it's um, um, Pasha has an idea what is it. But the problem is that we cannot figure out what is the rest of it. All the letters are clear. There's no question. But what does it mean? Uh, is not coming yet. Uh, we need some more time, I guess. Well, Pasha needs some more time, at least. I may not be uh, that good uh, in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, Sogdian. Uh, I'm not. I'm, I am uh, Sogdian who doesn't uh, speak. Right. I well, mostly uh, look and uh, work from um, the uh, visual materials. Um, as if this was not enough, we have now identified four new centers in addition to three which were known earlier. Um, uh, there's one more for which we have pretty much area, but no idea what is it. The area is uh, the central and upper Sangzar Valley. Uh, coins are scarce. Sangzar Valley is this. It's quite a long valley. It's quite an interesting river because it's the only river which actually runs north in this area. Uh, and uh, that, that is noticed even by even Halkhal in his um, um, commentary to his map uh, as a unique case. Uh, but uh, that is the, uh, this area. And there are two areas which might be important, uh, Usmat and Bahmao, uh, where the large concentration of early medieval monuments um, is known. Uh, the coins look like this. I'm uh, providing two types. Uh, this type is no doubt early. We're talking about, by, by iconography, we're talking about probably first half of the um, uh, seventh century. This type is by all standards late. We're talking about eighth century. Uh, uh, they are united by identical time, tamga, like this. Uh, but uh, uh, they unfortunately, well, at least those specimens which I see, uh, which I know, are unepigraphic. So we'll probably figure out eventually what is it. Uh, what do we know that somewhere in this area was situated the city of Nusket? It hasn't been identified. 
Uh, but we knew it from uh, two facts. One, the uh, southern gates of Bunjik, uh, southwestern gates of Bunjikat uh, were called uh, Nusket uh, gates. So uh, it must have been a significant town if um, the road to it um, caused the name of a Darb in, uh, um, um, in a um, uh, major city of Strushana, in the capital of Strushana. Uh, we also know that it was situated too far south east of Harkana. So uh, the only two areas where it could be are areas of Usmat or Bahmao. Um, sorry. Uh, so it's um, either here or here. And that coincides with coins, uh, coin uh, locations. But of course, this is mere uh, um, uh, hypothesis because material is scarce, no inscriptions, and even the city hasn't been found to be precise. Um, but that is a good state of uh, uh, affairs. There are worse states of affairs. There's an identified center in Zarafshan Valley. In all pre previous cases, I showed you uh, pretty pictures of landscapes. Here, I don't have it, so I have to show you uh, a black square uh, because it's not identified. Well, and uh, I also now think I understand uh, what was uh, the meaning of Malevich's black square. Uh, it's simply no information, right? Uh, so, um, and um, then uh, um, um, all that we know, all that is new about this coinage is that number of specimens in the recent years have been found in this area. That is the area of Varaksar and Maimurg and um, um, area along the mountains. Uh, given the fact that all the rest of it is found in Panjikant, um, well, might be uh, the story. The problem is that, of course, uh, the uh, reading is not um, quite established. And coins are scarce. Um, we have very few specimens. Uh, and uh, uh, there are two types, well, which Smirno read completely differently, one Pargar, another one Pansar. Uh, well, uh, um, that is uh, one th th thing uh, that is that can be established, surely, that it says Kubu, Wab, right, uh, the ruler. Uh, that's all. Uh, but uh, we can be sure that this principality was situated somewhere um, south east of Samarkand, south uh, east of Samarkand, or south of Samarkand, somewhere in this uh, Piedmont. Well, if we go a little bit further to the west, there's a place called Ishtihan, and um, um, it is in fact the place where Ishids moved when they were expelled from Samarkand by uh, Kutaiba ibn Muslim. We know that Ishtihan was residence for two Ikshids uh, uh, who minted standard Ikshidi coins. It's Ugrak and then Turhar. And uh, um, um, in my early article, I already argued it, well, uh, that uh, just this type, the best known type, of uh, Urak uh, is actually, as it was established by excavations in Tanjikand, um, by the works of Machaka Spopova, that it is um, appearing in Tanjikand only after uh, the peace with Nawasarib and Ziyar. So we're talking about between Soviets and Nasarib and Ziyar. Uh, we're talking about uh, restoration of the city in 740s. Uh, yet, uh, it was not, these coins were not there before um, instead of them. Um, that circulated the coins, which obviously were minted in Samarkand, which were known as uh, Guruk Type Two. Uh, uh, so, uh, and then uh, that is Turhar, probably minted as well there in Ishtihan, and that is Silver Turgar. What is interesting, these coins uh, uh, are rare. Uh, well, they're rare uh, in, uh, um, in comparison with uh, the rest of Samarkand Bukhar Huda coins, like Mugdrahams. Uh, uh, and uh, they start from actually Mugdrahan type and they develop further, but they kind of depend on the development in another center. In other words, they follow 
once in a while kind of update the type to um, this um, coins. Uh, when there are only really 11 specimens, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, here you have majority of them there, I think nine, right? Yeah, nine. Uh, so, and then uh, uh, these are coins, uh, uh, certainly of Samarkand Ekshid, uh, Samarkand Ekshid, because of the tamga, which is placed horizontally there. Horizontally placed tamgas uh, appear on Soviet coins in the um, uh, 750s uh, with Arabs around. And uh, um, uh, it was uh, long read by Smirnov that it's Malka, also title reserved only for actions of Samarkand. Uh, and then uh, the um, first word was, well, escaping reading, uh, appropriate reading. Uh, well, eventually I figured out that uh, it was um, um, something like Aleph, Yod. Then the letter, which at that moment was simple and seemed to be uh, Zain, and then uh, Tau. So uh, uh, there were all reasons to identify it as Yazid, Yazid ibn Ugrak, uh, who is mentioned uh, uh, at the meeting uh, in the office of uh, uh, Khurasan governor in uh, 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 1792. Uh, but uh, um, eventually, it became clear that uh, this first letter is more like Ro, and the whole word should be read Ayrit. Um, I don't, uh, I cannot offer decent etymology. Uh, it's understandable why it was taken for Yazid, uh, well, Ayzid, and then transformed into Yazid by uh, Tabari, or even maybe by Deguya, who was Deguya, who was actually. Um, 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 amended Tabri in this case. Um, so, um, and that is uh, the um, latest uh, um, massive coinage of Samarkand exchange, certainly in Ishtihan. Uh, few specimens are known in Penjikian, few specimens are known in the area of Samarkand. Most of them are coming from Miankal. And then this unique coin, which uh, we published together with Luke Tredwell some time ago, and uh, uh, which uh, we interpreted as an attempt of uh, the same um, uh, Arit uh, uh, um, Ibn Gurak uh, to remind him about himself uh, at the moment when um, Mokanna seized um, Samarkand in, uh, um, uh, during the Mokanna's revolt. Uh, and um, uh, um, Yazid uh, Ibn Gurak uh, minted this uh, Arab Sogdian coin with uh, uh, the year 130 um, on one side and uh, uh, normal uh, inscription with uh, Bismillah and Duriba and everything else uh, uh, with Ishtihan. Ishtihan, however, is spelled um, well with their own heart. So this is a bit of problematic. Uh, and then uh, um, uh, Sogdian inscription, uh, well, Huabu seems to be uh, read, possible to read. The rest is too damaged to come up with something certain. Um, I was trying to play with it for many years. Uh, so um, that is the Mint of Ishtihan. And then the last uh, area, uh, the last coinage, uh, uh, which uh, I already published earlier. Well, uh, some things were published by Sinji Hirano. I published an article where I summarized all the data at the moment. It's much more now. Uh, and uh, this is coinage, which, according to uh, one of the most prominent collectors, Alexander Maspamas from Tashkent, is uh, coming from this area. Uh, this is a mountain. Piedmonts and mountains to the west of Samarkand on the roads leading to uh, South Sogd. And these coins look like this. Unfortunately, they don't tell us 
uh, anything about the realm because uh, remarkably, it's the word wab, hubu, hub, written first from right to left and then from left to right. Pure bustrafidon, uh, very beautiful. Well, that happens specifically in South Sogdian coins. South, South Sogd, they tended to write in both directions, uh, not anywhere else, uh, as much as I know. Uh, and uh, uh, that is actually uh, closing our survey. Uh, results. Well, I got to say, there's some things that have to be done yet. So we have four black squares concurrently, at least, and they look like this. Uh, most of them are singular coins. Some of them are quite interesting because this one has Chach Tamga and inscription Malka. The name is not readable, but Malka, which is title reserved for Samarkand Shits. But uh, there's no Samarkand Shit Tamga, this Chach Tamga, not clear to me. Uh, the one which we know from the coins of Tarnavch, for example. Uh, not really. Uh, others are known in, in some small numbers, um, two or three specimens, but there are four coinages which are not settled. Um, the overall um, um, result. Um, so it appears as highly moneticized country because we really are talking about um, eleven coinages, eleven mints actively working only on territory of Samarkand sold. Well, Bukhara at that time uh, has probably two mints and uh, uh, South Sold has three means. Uh, so, but overall, Sogdiana has, uh, well, 16 means um, actively working. Uh, that is quite interesting. Well, more, we uh, have now um, kind of numismatic geography, which is somewhat better. Uh, and uh, uh, it's time to start working. Because uh, now the questions of chronology, typology, uh, well, probably adjustment of many readings and so on are all in front of us. Um, so I wish everybody big luck uh, in their research and uh, I will participate in the race. Thank you very much. That's all I wanted to say.